Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to yet another investor update. I'm your host, Dan Theok, Senior Vice President of Investment Banking here at Mayberry Investments Limited. Joining us today is the Executive Chairman of Mayberry Jamaica Equities Limited, Christopher Berry, and Gary Parrott, Asset Manager for MJE. Today we'll be bringing you exciting Q3 updates on Mayberry Jamaica Equities Limited results to September 30th, 2022. There will be a Q&A segment at the end of the program, so please stick around to uh, put in your questions and answers. Additionally, please remember to subscribe and hit the like button and the notification button if you'd like to receive updates like this every week and know when we go live. Before we get started, I'd like to take this moment to remind you that if you're looking to expand your investment portfolio and embark on your very first investment journey, Mayberry can place you on track to financial freedom. Follow us on social media at Mayberry INVJA to learn more. Now let's get right into the discussions on Mayberry Jamaican equities. But first, let me welcome Gary Parrott. Welcome, Gary. Thanks, Dan. Hi, everybody. And online, let me welcome the executive chairman of MJE, Christopher Berry. Welcome, Mr. Berry. Welcome, Dan. Welcome, everyone. Great. Thanks for being with us. Now let's get right into the presentation for today. Good deal. On the first slide, guys, we want to talk about the growth in Mayberry's results, and it's a whopping 539% growth in the EPS, 119% growth in the comprehensive income, 33% growth in total assets year over year, so that's September 2020 compared to September, September 2022, beg your pardon, compared to September 2021. Uh, total equities for that same comparable period also up by 39%, up to now $18.9 billion, coming from $13.68 billion. And we see also the uh, net book per share up 39% to $15.70, and the closing share price um, now up to $13.20, up 52% from a year ago. Next slide, just want to show you uh, what's going on with the nine-month results. Hopefully you can see it. If you can't, just trust me with the words and pull up the report yourself on the GSC today. For the nine-month results to September 2022, our net operating income is up to $4.4 billion. That's a 472% increase over $768 million the year before. The net profit for the period is now up to $4.1 billion for this nine-month period compared to uh, $647 million before, so that's also up by 539%. Total comprehensive income now at $3.958 billion for the period compared to $1.8 billion. That's 119% increase we talked about earlier. Um, despite that spectacular performance for the nine-month period, we did have a pullback in the last quarter of this nine-month period where, in fact, the total comprehensive income showed a loss of $2.7 billion. So in the quarter, uh, there was a pullback, and we'll talk a little bit about that, and that's obviously because of the continued increase in interest rates and the fact that we've seen P.E. ratios in the market generally pulling back. But despite that, uh, the, the, the performance is still up by an impressive uh, $5 billion year to date. So still very good results in the, the, the three quarters year to date. Next slide. Just want to focus on changes in the financial position and the fact that total assets are now up to $22.8 billion. Again, 33% higher than it was a year ago. And shareholders equity up to $18.85 billion, 38% higher than it was a year ago. Uh, we closed the December year in audit with um, shareholders' equity of about $5 billion. So even in the year to date, we've still seen about $3.8 billion growth uh, net, 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 despite the pullback that I mentioned in this last, this most recent last quarter. Taking a look at the composition of the portfolio, we know a lot of folks like to know about the top 10 um, portfolio and what we have in it. Uh, not many changes from a year ago. Um, led primarily by Supreme Ventures, um, CPG, and JMB. These are sort of the, the top 10 um, shares in the portfolio um, by performance. And, um, you know, we look to see continued growth in the portfolio across the top 10, which are all very strategic. 
I do want to make a special note of um, Jim McEbrolli's group uh, in particular, which we really um, are you know, betting big on and we're expecting bigger and better things from JBG, um, all of the top 10, frankly, even Grace Kennedy, where we've seen a little pullback recently in the share price. This was as high as $100. You know, all of these companies are still very solid companies. And when we get to the q and I'll definitely be asking Chairman and uh, Mr. Parrott a little bit about this top 10 and how they came to the selection and, you know, what can we expect for the future. Next slide shows top five additions and top five disposals. So in terms of the top five additions, I really think uh, the only thing new really is, I think, dollar financials. That's a recent um, IPO, and you can see that MG got in early on that and got themselves some dollar financials. Other than that, I think we just continue to add more uh, to the portfolio for JBG and JMB, which were in the top 10 previously. What we see here is uh, obviously the asset managers investing more in these two in particular, pretty deep in JPG, $85 million of investment, and similar, similarly in JMB. Um, and so we'll talk a little bit about that. In the top five disposals, nothing surprising there either. You can see them turning over the portfolio a little bit, selling a little bit of uh, Wigton, uh, notably selling about $30 million of carved cement. I'll definitely have a question for Chairman Peart on that, see if we can get some insights on that. But no surprises for me, generally speaking. And then after all of that, when you look at what makes up the 10 largest stocks in this you know, $28 billion portfolio, we see Supreme Ventures makes up about 58% of that portfolio. So they've put a little bit more in on SVL. CPJ is up to 12.9%. And I think just by virtue of the tremendous growth in that stock price in the last year, I suspect that alone has moved up its proportion of the total portfolio. But again, nothing new uh, in the top 10 really compared to what we saw last year. But I know a lot of folks like to know what's happening at MGE and we like to please, and so we like to share that information. Next slide shows the uh, look of the portfolio in terms of the net book value or the NAV. And, you know, again, you're seeing good growth in the NAV from $11.34 to $15.70. So that's about 30% um, growth in the NAV. So the asset values of the portfolio divided by the number of shares is how we calculate the NAV or the net book value. And it's a good way to see um, how the portfolio is performing vis-a-vis uh, -vis the stock price. And we'll look at the stock price on the next slide. The actual uh, changes in the stock price, uh, uh, you see where the market was as high as $15.70 and it's now down to $13.20. It's just you know a bit of market dynamics, maybe some market perception. But I think the NAV is very important for this type of portfolio because it is a portfolio of equities and the sum of the value of those equities really is what drives the total portfolio value. And we're long-term investors in the market. And what we're really interested in is the value of the equities that we own in the portfolio, which ultimately should translate into the value of our fund itself. And on the next slide, we can see a little bit of an anomaly between what the NAV is in blue, i.e. the sum total of all of the assets we have invested, the net assets that is, divided by our total shares, and we call that the NAV, versus the share price. Now, there's no logical reason why the share price should be trading at a discount to the NAV. And we see throughout this graph, in most of the instances, we can see a difference between the NAV and the share price. And that, to me, signals a good opportunity for wise investors to go and buy MGE. You want to buy the stock when the share price is below the NAV because ultimately, as the market gets more mature and sophisticated, we expect the share price to trade closer to the NAV. That's just you know, you know, know, basic investment 101, quite frankly. But again, in our market, we tend to see some lags and some anom anomalies from time to time. So that's it for the presentation. Again, I remind you guys to come in with your your, your questions, we'd be happy to entertain them. Um, I'm going to kick off two or three to our asset managers and then read a few from the funds. So first up, uh, Mr. Perry, first, first one for you is, We've seen a general pullback in the market over the last three months, presumably due to high interest rates. Um, we've seen the main market average PE come down from about uh, 14 times a year ago to now 10 times. 
Um, what's your general feel about the pullback that we've seen in the last quarter and your expectation over the next two, three, four quarters? Um, thanks, Dan. Um, it's expected. You know, you, there's an inverse relationship to the direction of interest rates and the PE multiple. And so what we've seen is that the market benefited significantly from relatively low interest rates. So the market PEs grew over that period. Now we're seeing a reversal of interest rates, meaning they're going higher. So you'd expect the PEs to adjust downward. Um, also, you have companies that are coming out of COVID and some of their results aren't as great as you would expect. Um, so it's always good to see the market pull back because, you know, trees don't grow through the sky. Um, it's, an ob it's obviously an opportunity to reset, um, take advantage of some of the pullback in certain stocks. We've seen where certain, certain shares have been pretty resilient, for example, Supreme Ventures, which I think the MJA portfolio benefits from um, because the price is still um, pretty high. I think that's more a function of the expectation of what is potentially out there to happen where, where that company is concerned. Also, it's one of the higher dividend paying stocks. So, you know, the expectation and something we've spoken about when we're putting together the portfolio of MJE, you know, you, you want certain stocks that can give you capital growth and then stocks that all can also give you dividend growth. And that's one of the reasons an SVL is a big portion of MJE because it gives you both. It's a company that does well in a recession. It's a company that does even better in a growing environment. And it's a company that has capital appreciation and, and dividends, you know. So that has done well. Um, you're going to see shares like Carreras, who's a typically a strong dividend payer. You know, as interest rates start to increase, their stock of cash is going to throw off more interest income and ultimately is going to give uh, push that stock price. And also, you know, people are going to focus on on, on the dividends from, from that company. So in short, uh, it's expected. You want the market to pull back. It's an opportunity to reset and get better opportunities that you, you, you see out there. And I think over the next three to six months, um, it's a good opportunity to get into stocks like JMB. You know, that, that's just an amazing buy. You know, last year, last year we thought it was a great buy at 37. It's a much better buy at 38 because the results have gotten even, even better. Absolutely. Um, you know, so it's, it's a huge opportunity. It's one of the biggest screaming buys in, in our marketplace. In terms of the outlook, as we have been indicating, um, we expected this, this, this increase in interest rates. Uh, it has been driven by inflation. From my perspective, what the research shows is that a lot of the inflation, the genesis of it, were high shipping rates, the freight rates. You know, you saw where, you know, to move a container moved from $3,000 to $20,000 in the space of a couple months last year. And we're now seeing where those rates are coming down significantly. So whilst it was the genesis of the increase in inflation, it could be the genesis of the reduction in, in inflation. So as such, you know, we expect to see interest rates start to temper, certainly by the March quarter. And in a lot of instances, you might see where interest rates have started to trend down. But certainly towards the back end of next year, going into 2024, we would be seeing, we expect to see either interest rates stay at the same level or come off somewhat. Um, you know, and I think positioning ourselves so that now is going to be a good thing, not just for MJE, but obviously the, the average investor out there. Thank you for that. Yep. And our expectation, obviously, is as those interest rates have peaked or start to come back down, the market will perceive that mm -hmm. and we'll see P.E. ratios flying again. So I agree with Mr. Parrott. It's a great time to be investing. There's some definite buys out there screaming out at you. JMB for sure is one of them with a P.E. of less than seven times in a main market where the average is 10 times and probably trending back to 12 times in the next year. I now appreciate why in our top five additions uh, for the period, we see $81 million purchased in relation to JMMMB. Uh, Chairman Berry, next question is to you. The next top five purchase was Jamaica Broaders Group. Uh, tell us a little bit about why you've bought $85 million more of Jamaica Broaders Group. What are you seeing? What are you expecting? Um, why do you look like you're bullish on JBG? Yeah, well, there are, two, there are two main reasons. So the first reason is that um, 
broiler tends to do better whenever you have a lot of inflation because the price of of other protein tends to rise faster than the price of chicken. Um, it isn't always that way, but it tends to be that way in Jamaica over a long period of time. The second reason I like broilers is that uh, I would say most companies in Jamaica are capped by the local economy. We have seen where Jamaica broilers has been expanding in the US and um, that market, um, just in this number of people, is more than a hundred times the size of the Jamaican market. In terms of consumption, I mean, I, I, I don't, I've never done that calculation, but I mean, the US is the biggest economy in the world. So, you know, I mean, you don't really need to do the math. So I think Jamaican broilers having shown that they can make money abroad um, could be in the beginning of really a massive growth cycle. Absolutely. Couldn't agree with you more. And when we talk about the growth potential of Jamaica broilers, it's the fact that 40% of their income now comes from North America. And then we see in other regions where they have not done so well, uh, Haiti in particular, where they've now signaled the intention to exit. So I think Jamaica Broilers Group at $30 is a steal. Uh, I think that PE is about uh, nine times. Uh, we saw them recently reducing prices before the results came out. Then you saw the fantastic results. I have no doubt that that's a stock that's going to do exceptionally well in the next uh, 6, 9, 12 months. And I think that's a great buy on the part of MJE. So it's good to see uh, two moves there that obviously make good sense to me. Uh, Mr. Parrott, um, the growth in the MJE fund is really unprecedented. This is a fund that was maybe $10 billion three, four years ago. Now you guys are up to $25, $27 billion. Uh, really impressive growth. But you really have such little debt, you know, $27 billion in assets and only $3 billion of debt. Uh, just talk to me a little bit about the potential for further growth in MJE. Uh, you know, where could this thing be in two, three, four years? And why is... You know, why should people go and buy some MJE? <laughs> you know, um, so I throw that first question out to David Rose. You know, David was asking about um, the $2 billion in debt that we had. You know, so against the backdrop of $25 billion in assets, you know, that's what, 10%? Yep. Um, so leverage is, is pretty low. The, the, the growth has been great. And the second point I'll make is that you know, Mayberry has always been high in Jamaica. We've always said it. And more importantly, we've always indicated that the stock market is a huge opportunity for people to make money. And this massive growth that you've seen has come from investing in the stock market. And, you know, it's not just a place where you can invest for a year, try to get 200%, run away and come back in another 10 years. You know, consistent investing, you know, um, will give you these kind of returns. That said, you know, we believe Jamaica is in a purple patch. So we have seen significant growth pre-COVID. We've been able, we're one of the few countries that navigated COVID pretty well. Um, and coming out of COVID, you know, we're seeing where we're getting back on that expansion, uh, that expansion platform. I mean, we have several hotels that are being built. The tourism product is still in its nascent state. People don't appreciate that. There is significantly more growth that can come from tourism. Um, real estate prices, when you compare it to other Caribbean markets, are still relatively low. So there's a lot of growth that can come from Jamaica. So if we're navigating, you know, you know, COVID, the fiscal issues pretty well, um, the reduction that we feel we'll, we'll see in interest rates in another 18 months, again, that augurs pretty well. And we think one of the first places you're going to see that growth continue and expand is the market. So even though we have had significant growth over the last couple of years, knock on wood, we don't have any serious hurricanes or infrastructural issues. Um, we think that Jamaica has significantly more growth. And we believe a lot of that growth is going to manifest itself in the Jamaica Stock Exchange. And as such, you know, that's why you buy MJE. Um, because we have certainly demonstrated over the last five years that we can mine that growth. And we believe 
again, as I've said, that there's more growth to come. So if you don't want to stress, just buy MJE. Thanks for that. And specifically on the leverage, you know, David Rose asks, will MJE leverage more of its portfolio to invest <laughs> in the market, which is seeing a reduction in liquidity as larger investors shift to fixed income? So, again, you know, the, the beautiful thing about the stock exchange, certainly for us, is it doesn't matter how high the podium we scale and shout to the world that this is where you need to invest. You still have a lot of people that just don't believe in it. And that's fine. You know, we'll just continue to invest more money and make more money on it. So, you know, we have found that time in the market is almost an impossibility. But it's sexy. Everybody watches and here's a day trader. And, you know, you come in just before the market moves. But what you will find is that, you know, all the studies show that you, it's, it's, you, you extract value and create a lot of wealth by positioning at the right time. So it's not necessarily market timing in that you can get in just before it jumps $30 and then you sell as soon as it jumps out and thing. So when you're going in and out of the market, that's when you run the risk of missing significant moves, you know, because things happen. And what you need to appreciate is that when things happen and the news is available to all, it's very unlikely that somebody's going to sell that position. So to benefit from significant wealth in the market, especially the JSE, you have to be in there. You have to be positioned. So that investor that, you know, converts U.S., get into J, buy some stock, then sell the stock after 10%, go back into interest income, you know, and then hoping to get back in when the market moves again, you'll probably miss 20, 30, 40, 50% of that move. And, you know, historical studies, certainly in Jamaica, show that across the, the three key asset types that a Jamaican investor loves, uh, the three key asset types being fixed income, real estate, and the stock, the stock market. It shows that the stock market significantly outperforms the other two. And the third being, obviously, um, the devaluation and the foreign exchange risk, meaning going back and forth from JTUS dollars. And, you know, the historical studies show that investing in the stock, in the stock market in Jamaica is the place to be. It gives you the most superior returns. Um, but again... At the end of the day, if they, it shows that this is where you need to be. If people still don't want to be there, we'll be here. Um, and we'll continue to make that money. And, you know, again, we've made it easy for you. And by MJE, you don't have to sit down and watch it every day because, you know, Chris Mark and myself will do that for you. And, um, you know, we started, this, we started this portfolio basically in 2007 with approximately 10 million Jamaican at the time. 10 million U.S. at the time, and it's now worth in excess of 100 million U.S., and we, con we continue and expect that growth to continue. Will it be massive growth every year? Maybe, maybe not. Um, will it be gradual growth over time? Probably. Um, but, you know, this is the place to be. MJ by MJ. Thanks for that. Now, Chairman Barry, you know, I started my investment journey six years ago uh, when you and I had a had a dinner meeting and and I have no regrets and and I remember very clearly but I want you to sort of repeat it you know at the time I was big in real estate US bonds and I dibbled a little bit in equities and I, I thought to myself it really doesn't get better than US bonds earning you 10 11 12 percent and and real estate uh, but you were a big equities guy and you've been that way for a long time you've been at it for 30 years I mean tell me a little bit more again why you believe so much in equities in Jamaican equities, when a lot of people scoffed at the Jamaican stock market, you were sort of first mover, you were there, you were investing in equities big time. Tell us a little bit about your, you know, 30-year journey and why you're such a big fan of equities. N not hearing you, Chairman. Um, well, we actually started I mean, when we first came to the market, we our first license was as a stockbroker. And um, we did that because, you know, my, my dad was doing that from the 60s when, when the stock market started. And, um, and we decided to, to, to make it into a, a business. So what I've found over the years is that... Um, 
when you look at equities versus debt, you know, and especially in recent times before the hike in interest rates, you know, um, quality fixed in income instruments are yielding between, you know, maybe two to 4%. And um, I've seen many aerated securities go from aerated to junk. So think about it like this. If you have five securities in your portfolio and um, one of them goes from aerated to junk, you might lose 70% of your, your, your money in that one security. If or 100%, but let's say you get back 30 cents on the dollar or 50 cents on the dollar. So your portfolio is now down by 10%, but you're only earning three to 4% per annum. So it's gonna take you some time to make that back. Whereas if you have a portfolio of equities, same five equities, um, to make 10%, in an equity is 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 easy, you know, and you you're gonna you're gonna get a bad result. You're gonna see the the, the company going bad. You're gonna have time to sell. Um, yes, you can still have the same fifty percent loss on one of your stocks, but the other four will make it up um, in a, in a very short time. So I think on a risk adjusted basis, my experience is that um, investing in equities is actually safer than investing in debt. Plus, you get a much higher return, and that's why I like it. And um, you know, in terms of Jamaica, why Jamaica? So I've, in, I have personally um, uh, foreign equities in my personal portfolio, um, but I wouldn't say I'm an expert in in international equities. I think, you know, being in Jamaica all of my life and um, Gary and I and Mark and we're living here in Jamaica and we, we we know what's going on here. It puts us in a very good position to know what to invest in in Jamaica. And then we get the added benefit of investing in Jamaica and watching Jamaica grow. And as a Jamaican, that's very pleasing to me. So, um, you know, the, the funnest part of my job, I think, is helping the small companies to raise capital because who knows in a hundred years time, you know, these, some of these small companies that we're funding today will be the greatest candidates of the future and be the, the style awards that really make the pillars of Jamaica's financial and, and corporate sector strong. So um, that's basically why I do it. And it's, it's worked out pretty good. And I think it's going to get even better. Absolutely. Thank you for that, Chairman. Appreciate that. Okay, going over to the questions uh, out in social media. Let me start with Devlin, whose question I think I'll point towards uh, Gary Pert. He's saying the SVL dividend continues to be a major revenue stream for MJE. Can we see continued increases in the SVL position over the next few quarters? Um, I don't know if I'm getting that as the asset manager, as the executive chairman of SVL. <laughs> <laughs> but what I can what I can say to you, um, and I've I've alluded to it initially, you know, SVL is 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 an anchor investment in MJ's portfolio for a variety of different reasons. Um, as indicated, capital appreciation. Capital appreciation will come from increased earnings. Um, we think the potential of SVL is 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 vast. It is it is huge. Um, you know, and that potential expanded significantly with their latest announcement that, you know, they now have a proprietary lottery software that is internationally certified. So, you know, a lot of people on, on most sophisticated exchanges, um, you know, the stock price would have, would have taken off. Um, but it's clear that a lot of people locally don't really understand what that means in terms of the potential for expansion for SVL, which, which simply means um, as, a, as a lottery operator, usually you, you take on a technical service provider that would provide your lottery software. So which is what the structure for SVL in Jamaica is. Their technical provider is IGT, um, one, of our, one of SVL's longstanding partners, one of the largest technical services providers and overall gaming companies in the world. 
and you know with this new software that is proprietary um it allows svl to become one of if not the only operator and technical service advisor in the world so svl can now have the opportunity to bid on lottery lottery tenders projects right across the world and if you put it into perspective and this is public information um, SVL pays its technical service advisor anywhere between 12 to 15 million US dollars per annum. So if you were to do uh, a future cash flow discount that you can get an idea as to what one potential bid could add to the value of Supreme. Can you imagine if they get two or three um, such, such things? So that's huge in terms of, in terms of potential. Um, the dividend is there. They have a dividend policy that speaks to a 90% payout of dividend. And again, that's huge for the shareholders of SVL. It helps the MJE's portfolio in that, you know, it, 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 it gives MJE significant cash flow. And obviously that's the cash flow that helps to service the debt, the relatively low debt um, that it has. You know, so, you know, as SVL continues, you know, just like any other companies, there'll be ups, there'll be downs. Um, preparing for certain things, you might see dips in earnings, but the long-term potential remains extremely strong. Um, you know, and as I've said to people, do you want to be sitting on the time on the sideline trying to time the stock, and then you get you just hear of an announcement, and that announcement immediately all the shares dry up because they want higher prices, and you know we think that's the potential. Of, of of SVL and as S if SVL can you know take on 10 to 15 percent of its potential that that value is is is, is huge because it's 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 technically already a global company right a lot of people are not are not aware it has a business in Guyana it has a business in South Africa um, they're not yet huge revenue earners for the company but it's a global footprint as you take on additional businesses across the globe you know, that whole mindset, et cetera, changes and the ability to earn revenue changes. Um, so, you know, it's, I think it's an important key and key point for MJE. Um, and I think as X Supreme expands, so will the value of, of, of MJE. Thanks for that, Gary. Appreciate this. Uh, another question coming in, I'll direct this to Chairman. It says, MJE has a cash pile of $300 million. Do you see an opportunity to capitalize on the decline in some main market stocks? Yes, definitely. Um, we, we like to buy when the prices get low, and um, we've been we've been buying, you know, Royals and and JMP. Those look pretty cheap. Um, but you have to be patient because you know, you know, I don't know how long the interest rate hikes will last, and I think. Uh, while the interest rates hikes go on, the prices, you know, all things being equal, will keep falling. So, um, you know, things are very different from the last time we saw this was when Volcker um, was trying to kill off interest rates with, with um, kill off inflation with interest rates, sorry. And, and it took him three years. So the whole situation is very different now. I don't think it will take three years, um, but I don't know how long it's going to take before we see the Fed stop tightening. And I think once the Fed is tightening, I think a BOJ is going to be in lockstep with the Fed. And, and so we're going to be buying, but we're not going to be loading up on at one time. We're going to, you know, as Gary says, you know, take our time and, and, and get the buys, get a good buys. Great. One more for you, Chairman. Uh, someone's asking, will you continue to buy more dollar financials and will you continue selling more carb cement? So for carb cement, um, you know, I have a, a fundamental issue with carb cement. I think your position, the board's position with the minority shareholders it is stamped amount to highway robbery. I've said this before, and my position has been, hasn't changed. So I find it difficult to partner with people that I feel is robbing me. So I have no option but to exit um, cement company because uh, I can't partner with people who I think are
factory in me unfairly. However, what, what I'm seeing there is, is a huge commitments for new hotel rooms, um, huge commitments for increased um, infrastructure across Jamaica. Um, I, I, I see the demand for cement going up and up and in the right direction, as my friend from the Gordon House would have said many times. So, you know, the thing is, I'm not going to give away our cement, but I'm definitely not staying in. Um, so that's cement, which was the other one he asked about that. Do dollar financials, will you continue to buy more of dollar financials? So, so uh, dollar financial has, um, has an execution framework and um, my, my thing is with these younger companies is that I like to see execution is the hardest part of every business. And um, I think Dollar has, has a lot of great ideas. And for me, I want to see how they execute against their idea set. And as they execute and keep improving their execution, um, then we will definitely increase our investments based on what we see. Um, but, you know, we want to see how good they are at executing. Thanks for that, Chairman. And, and Devin says, uh, so Gary, I take it that it means MJ will continue to buy SVL. Uh, and that's not what he said, Devin. I, I think what he said is the stock has huge potential. Uh, I'll tell you it's the second best dividend paying stock uh, on the market, and it now makes up 58% of our portfolios. So we certainly like SVL. You know, whether we buy more or not remains to be seen. Well, if, if I could add, sure. um, you know, if, if you actually look on the analysis, it's not that we have bought significantly more SVL or materially more SVL. I think it's a case where most of the other shares in the portfolio have retreated faster than SVL has, has retreated. And I think that's why you've seen SVL move from 49% of the portfolio to 58% currently. Um, but the fundamentals are indeed there. You know, uh, we're a big player and there are different ways in which we will extract value. And, you know, I, th I think it's appropriate to remind people that the management fees for that is charged to MJE is one of the lowest, if not the lowest, in the entire market. Um, of Jamaica and maybe across the world. And so, for example, the incentive fees, the incentive fees are only charged when we have made new highs in terms of the portfolio. So for the quarter that has just passed, it's, it is likely that the incentive fee will be zero because the value of the portfolio has, has indeed come off. The, as, the asset management fee, which is based on the size of the portfolio, again, it is one of the lowest in the marketplace. And you know, I, I challenge the other equity funds out there to 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 go lower than what we are, you know. So, you know, that's another big reason to invest in MJE. You know, not only are we giving outsized returns, but the fees that are charged to the portfolio, you know, is one of the lowest, if not the lowest, um, in in the environment. So, well, thanks for that. And I think with that, I just again want to remind you guys, uh, go and look at the results, do your own deep dive. But for the nine-month period to September, you see earnings of $4.1 billion, which is uh, up by 539% over the comparable period last year. Although we did see a dip in the most recent quarter, um, the company's total assets uh, now up to $22.8 billion, only carrying $3 billion of debt. Uh, you know, MJ is definitely going places, and I encourage you to stay tuned to see what happens in the next quarter. Uh, before I close out, Chairman, any last thoughts from last thoughts from you or last comments? You're muted. My last comment would be by MJ. Excellent. Excellent. I couldn't agree with you more. And if you, again, look at the slide of where the share price is relative to the NAV, if you bought MJE today, you'd be getting it at a 15% discount to the NAV. And again, that NAV 
you're going to see that increasing by 15 to 20 percent in my view in the next six to nine months as interest rates peak and the market's perception of those increases uh, end. So whether the rates hikes end in three months or six months, I don't think matters. I think in six to nine months' time, we'll have certainty that the end is near. Confidence will come back. PEs are going to trend back up, and the value of the portfolio is just going to fly again. So great opportunities out there to buy MJE, JMMB, Jamaica Brothers Group. If you're not sure what to do, feel free to call us at Mayberry uh, Investments Limited. Uh, we're investment advisors, and we're happy to build portfolios for clients. We're happy to direct you into the MJE portfolio. Lots of opportunities out there. We encourage you to start investing today. That's the key. As Gary said, don't stay on the sidelines waiting to time the market. You want to get in the market today. It's a great time to be investing in Jamaica. Uh, don't be lazy and wait on the IPOs only. Make long-term commitments in the stock market, and you will see that this is the best-performing asset class by far. Real estate prices, you have to be careful right now, and you can't buy a million dollars of real estate easily. You can buy a million dollars worth of equities quite easily. So we encourage you guys to get out there, start investing today, and contact us at Mayberry Investments Limited if you need some advice about building a portfolio. So to our viewers, thank you all for being a part of today's investor update. I'd also like to thank my fellow panelists, Chairman Christopher Berry and Gary Peart, the asset manager for MJE, for your invaluable contributions towards today's discussions. As always, I'd like to thank you and ask you to keep up to date with all things Storm related. So please check us out on social media. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Mayberry Investments Limited. Thank you all for tuning in today. We really appreciate you. And remember, wise investors, slow and steady wins the race. Keep safe.